Thank you so much for being here today. You all look fabulous. Um, uh, we're so happy to be able to put on this program, uh, the long awaited designer distinction. I hope you've been eagerly awaiting it as much as I. Um, Daniel, if you'd like to go ahead and start recording, we'll get started. Hi, welcome to the designer distinction. This is the Garden Club program, and we are recording this for posterity as well, so you'll all be able to enjoy it a second time around, or a third or fourth. My name is Denise Reagan, and I am the Executive Director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville, and I welcome you all here today. I am joined by our staff, uh, sitting right in the middle here, doing all of our AV today, is Daniel Stark, our Operations Manager. And somewhere in the ether is Christina Kittle, our Administrative Assistant, who probably helped check you in this morning. And we're all very happy to be here to welcome you. We could not put on programs like this without the generous support of the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund, whose grant allows us to do programs like this and make recording of them available on our blog. So thank you, Jesse Ball DuPont Fund. I'd also like to thank our chair of the designer distinction, Virginia Kirby. Uh, this was, and she just walked in. Hi, Virginia. <laughs> and, um, so a lot of thought went into this. Um, we were planning this in the middle of a pandemic, and uh, so a lot of extra precautions had to be taken. And uh, it was not easy, but uh, we have made our way through. I'd also like to thank Chanel Lee, who is a new member of our Board of Trustees. And she did all the centerpieces on the tables that you'll be enjoying today, which we'll also be raffling off at the end of today. So you might be able to take one home. So if you don't win one of the beautiful arrangements that'll be done, and one of the uh, other pieces of art that uh, Ashley has brought in, you can win a centerpiece. So lots of chances to win. All right, it's time to introduce our speaker for the day. Ashley Woodson Bailey is an acclaimed floral designer, photographer, and artist who creates several original floral designs, then photographs them to turn them into breathtaking patterns that she applies to fabric, wallpaper, fine art prints, and products of all kinds. After a, harrowing car accident, left, after a harrowing car accident left her bedridden with a broken back and shattered spirit, Ashley channeled her love of flowers into a healing new venture filled with beauty, depth, and exquisite curiosity. A self-taught photographer, Ashley's signature florography art prints launched in 2014. Her eponymous brand naturally expanded to include wallpapers, fabrics, and limited edition products as her desire to live among flowers grew. Her inaugural collection, Dark, was inspired by the transition of the flower from blossom to fading stem and the deep desire to preserve this metamorphosis as a frozen moment in time. Please help me welcome Ashley Woodson Bailey, our designer of distinction. Hi. Oh, I should mention, if you have questions today, we will have um, somebody with a microphone who will be roaming around. And uh, when it looks like Ashley has a little time in between, you know, while she's inserting flowers and such, we can ask them during, and then we'll also have time afterward for you to ask questions. So if you have questions, we'll get them answered for you. Whoops, there we go, welcome. And I can mute this. Thank you, Denise. Hi, I'm Ashley Woodson Bailey. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm not used to microphone, so please tell me if you can hear me more than just my breathing. Um, I am very excited to be here and to be asked to do this. The last time I was here, I was actually assisting Mimi Brown, who is a dear friend of mine, and she's a florist in New York City. So now I'm taking her place, I guess. Um, I'm gonna go through this whole clicker thing, this presentation, and y'all can stop me and ask questions if you want to. Um, okay, where do I point it? Okay, so I started doing flowers, gosh, in 1994. Right, out of, right after I graduated from college. And um, I, before that, I didn't know that I could actually make money doing flowers and be a florist and survive, um, which actually 
I'm not sure that I actually did survive very well at that time. I made about $5 an hour, um, but I loved it. I thought it was the greatest thing I'd ever done in my whole life. And I just knew I wanted to be around flowers all the time. Um, so these are some pictures of my family. My husband is my assistant. He's hiding back over here, Brad Bailey. Um, my daughter, Birdie. And my first business was actually called the Bird Collective for her. And it was a flower, a floral company based in Austin, Texas. Um, we were there for two years. That's Woodson. And Woodson is actually here today. He's behaving or else he gets all electronics taken away. Um, Lane and our, our cat. Oh, it says Lang but that's not right, it's L-A-N-E. Um, oh, I skipped my, the most important part of my family. Um, George is on the left, Rose is on the right, and Kitty Latte, I mean, Rose is the middle, Kitty Latte is the right. Kitty Latte is the love of my life, and Brad is fully aware of that. Um, keep switching. Okay, so this is me right when I started doing flowers. Um, and I made this arrangement that the bride right there is actually nine months pregnant. And I made this arrangement so you wouldn't be able to tell that she was nine months pregnant. Um, and I was also a bridesmaid with her. Let's see. Okay, so I, first of all, I'm from Corpus Christi, Texas. Um, and so I'm from the land where weddings are huge. You know, I'm sure during the pandemic, they were still huge. Um, you know, 500 people, 1,000 people, that's not unusual. And budgets of, well, and this is the 90s, budgets of $500,000 just on the flowers. So when I was doing flowers, I worked with several different people. I, I started doing flowers in Dallas, and then I moved to Houston did flowers there. Then I moved to New York City, did flowers there. And then I moved to Savannah, Georgia, and I was actually the director of events at Savannah College of Art and Design. Um, and then left there because I married this one and moved to Atlanta, and then we moved to Austin. So when I was doing flowers in the 90s, the People only wanted topiaries. Do y'all remember that time where it was just topiaries? And so each one of these costs close to $1,000. So you imagine on every single table, and that's all they wanted. Uh, and they were beautiful. I can't imagine making one now. And then this, again, is this is at the River Oaks Country Club in Houston. And that is an entire tablecloth of fresh roses. And so we had to be there on site the day of the wedding with hot glue, putting it all together. Um, and it was incredible, you know, but it was also extremely expensive. So when we moved to Austin, we, I, we lived in Marietta, Georgia, which is north of Atlanta prior to. And I had left Savannah, moved to Marietta, and we lived in a, a neighborhood with an HOA, and I'm sorry if I insult anyone right now, but I can't do that very well, and I, um, I cried every day. So how long were we there? A few months. And I, I was like, we have to leave. And so Brad graciously moved me to Austin which is where I went to college, went to University of Texas. And there I started to do more big weddings and was very busy and loved it. And just was in this picture, I had been asked to be part of the um, Beholden group, which is Anthropology's bridal company. So I was just, you know, moving up and up and up in this whole chain of, of becoming a much wanted florist. 
So this is in Houston, and this is at the Beholden. And this, I had done this great event, and I was super excited, and then went home the next day, and we went to Wimberley, Texas, which is, is anyone familiar with Texas? Stephanie um, and Woodson. Um, so Wimberley, Texas is in the hill country, and it's right outside of Austin. And we had gone to my parents' house there and just hung out with them. And then we were coming back to Austin, and that happened. So I was, we were driving, and we were hit head on by another pickup truck. Um, and I broke my back. I tore my duodenum, I tore my, what else did I, oh yeah, my aorta, um, I broke my ribs, so I was in the hospital for quite some time, and I had all of these events, because I was an uh, in-demand florist, and so I had my phone, and so I was texting people, and I was also um, emailing my clients saying, hey, I'm in the hospital, I don't know if I'm going to walk again, but I can absolutely do your wedding. <laughs> so don't worry. I'll be there. Um, and that didn't happen. So I basically lost, I think I lost all but two weddings um, and everything. I, and I was in a back brace for seven months. I couldn't pick up Woodson, my son. Um, and he was seven months old and he was in the car with us. Brad was driving and he was totally fine, thank God. Um, he was a fat baby, so he was already in a giant seat. Um, anyway, so during that time, when I was, oh, the, they let my dog come to the hospital with me. Did you, oh, you wanna put it down? Is that better? No. Okay. Um, so, George would be underneath the covers in the hospital with me and the doctors would walk in and he would go and they would be like, Are, is, is she growling at us? Um, but, and that's, there's Woodson as a little baby. Um, but during this whole time, I, people were bringing me flowers and I'm gonna skip past this. People were bringing me flowers, and I, um, I didn't have any, I couldn't, I couldn't really read a book. I couldn't watch a show or a movie because I was on all sorts of medication, so I couldn't remember anything. So all I could remember to do was take a picture because I knew it would be there the next day or four hours later, and then I would start to play with the photos. Um, and I was very, very depressed because I didn't think I was ever going to be able to do flowers again because my doctor said, you'll never do flowers again the way you did before, which I thought was very dramatic. I mean, I did flowers. I wasn't flying rocket ships or whatever. And, but they were right because doing flowers and being a florist is very labor intensive and the buckets are really heavy and you're climbing up on scaffolding and you're you know, it, it's more than people realize it is. And so I, um, I was very sad. So I started taking pictures and all of my pictures that I was doing were very dark, all of them. I mean, and, and it's reflected in, in my work at that time. Um, so like, and, and it's my favorite way to photograph still. And it's very much, I, I studied art history in college. And so it's very much, reflective of the Dutch master's time. And I, I do that on purpose. Um, so, oh, that's so much better. Um, so when I launched my business, I thought that one person would buy a print and that would be it. And I um, launched it. And on the same day, there was a website at the time called Design Sponge and Grace Bonnie ran it and it had I don't, I mean, 500,000 people subscribed to it. So on the first day, I sold 150 prints, which was incredible, of course. And I also 
met someone who now sells all my prints in Canada. And she said, I have a celebrity who wants your print in her bedroom. And I was like, okay, can you tell me who it is? And she wouldn't tell me because she knew I would tell everyone that day. Um, and I was very nervous that it was going to be a Kardashian because I don't, I didn't want it to be a Kardashian. Um, and it was Jessica Alba. So this hangs in Jessica Alba's bedroom, which makes me very happy because I think she's probably nice. Um, and I sold out of this print in like two days because everyone saw that and then emailed and said, I want what Jessica has and how did Jessica frame it? And I would respond, I have no idea. I, am, I don't know Jessica, I mean, but I can tell you the size that she wanted. Um, so through all that, I then, I, I, the whole, I guess my entire point of all this, through this terrible tragedy, so much beauty and joy came out of it. Um, and so much more than I ever expected. I did not go into this thinking I was going to have a business or um, I just was trying to entertain my brain and not go crazy. So I got contacted by a woman in Australia and have now gone to Australia seven times to Sydney and, Mel and Melbourne to teach classes on how to arrange flowers and photograph them. So that was my first trip. And when I was there the first time, I called him and said, we were in the middle of buying a house. And I said, don't buy the house. We're moving here. <laughs> but we didn't, obviously. So these are just some of my dark prints. Those are actually magnolias from here. And those are beautiful peonies and tulips. Just going to go through these quickly. But these are all on my website. So when I was in Australia the first time, I, I attempted to make a um, wallpaper pattern on my own in Photoshop, and it's very hard to do that. But I put it up on you know my screen, and this girl came up to me asked after the presentation and said, can I talk to you about your wallpaper? And I said, sure. She said, it's awful. And I said, you're hired. So she lives in Tasmania and she lays out all of my patterns and still does and since 2014. She, the dark pattern on the left is called Dutch Love and that's my number one selling pattern. And it, and it I can't imagine that it will ever not be. But this is um, Faye, that's one of my patterns, and I did it all on the floor and up on the walls. Oh, there was, that's Dutch Love on grass cloth. I don't know why I keep doing that. That's Frida, and look, and you can see it, it's all throughout their entire house. It's amazing. And that's their elevator. That's into the garden on grass cloth. That's Dutch Love, the print. Dutch Love in a restaurant in Chicago. So that, on this one, the carpet, they made carpet with the Dutch Love pattern, which was, I, would I haven't ever seen it in person, but it's amazing. That's, a lot of people put my wallpaper on the ceilings. This is actually a bathroom here, and that's fabric on the whole walls. This is a dance floor that people have made. Giant prints that I shipped to England. Look how cute. <laughs> That's a little nursery. Um, more prints. That is actually at MD Anderson here. That's my showroom in New York. And I'm trying to get to, and that's a restaurant in Houston. Oh, this is at the Instagram offices, my wallpaper, and there's a sofa covered there. That's a restaurant in Venice. There's Whitson. That's a sofa in my fabric, which is 
amazing. I still am like constantly pinching myself that this even happens on a regular basis. Okay, so this, I've done a lot of collaborations and I've been very lucky to be even asked. And my first collaboration was with Kohler. Um, and they reached out to me and I thought they might have had the wrong address. Um, but they didn't and they flew us to Kohler and gave us the whole tour and it was just amazing. And they came down to Marietta and we did this whole photo shoot. And so these are the results. That's an ad that they put out. That's one of the sinks, which there's a sink. I brought one of those sinks with me. So when we're done, make sure you go and check it out. Um, that's the rectangular one. And then I did a paper collaboration with Gallison. Um, these are kids clothes with the Australian company, Corksicle, which there's a Corksicle back there as part of the raffle for y'all. That's more Corksicle stuff. Of course, if it's, ah, CB2, which is Creighton Barrel's sister company. I did, they did chairs and plates and bedding. There's the bedding, slip it, and curtains. And then I also made silk pajamas in Dutch Love. And I did a collaboration with a clothes, clothing company and made this gorgeous like kimono robe. That's Birdie, almost 13 attitude. Um, and then I have since moved into making these collages out of Vogue magazines that I've collected since I was 12 years old. So, and I've moved them from city to city to city to city. And Brad is thrilled that I don't have any more to move. I took, cause they're so heavy and I'm, anyway, I just decided I'm gonna make these fun collages, like flower, everything is always floral. I love, I love flowers. Um, if I don't have flowers, I'm not very happy. Um, and no one buys me flowers. I said that to Brad. I said, no one buys me flowers because they think, what are we going to buy you? But look, you just buy me all of this. Um, that's another one of my fun collages. And this is another wallpaper series. And this is the newest. I did wallpapers with the collages. And that's Woodson right there on the little motorbike. And I have, I also do fabric and um, I actually intended to bring fabric and I forgot it. Um, all right, I'm going to start doing flowers. Honey, will you grab the basket? This is Brad Bailey. Oh, by the way, thank you all for bringing greens in. I don't, I, I never buy greens. I just cut them from my yard or occasionally someone else's yard. Um, but I just feel like there's so many greens out there. Why spend the money on it? But I had all my flowers flown in from both New York and Los Angeles. And where is Marsha Fox? Mar oh, hi. Um, okay, I'm about to bring yours up because they're so beautiful. Where are those balls? Oh, here we go. If I didn't have all these flowers, which I almost didn't, but that's a whole different story. Um, I would have just done beautiful arrangements with these greens. So are any of y'all florists? No. Not one. Gardeners, yes, yes. So you all have big, beautiful gardens. <laughs> Can you teach me how to garden? Because I am a, a killer of anything that grows, sadly. So I just have a plastic container in here, and I got this basket at Target. Um, 
and I get a lot of my containers at Target. I also get a lot of my containers at like little antique stores or sometimes garage sales. I just, um, I don't generally like to use the containers that they sell at, um, I, I, I don't really ever use glass containers um, or the common stuff that you, you find at all the different wholesalers. And I, I have tried to work with the wholesalers here, but I just can't find the flowers that I, that I want. I feel like once you live in New York and do flowers in New York, there's just no going back to, um, to, to Pinnock. This is not, when we moved here, I actually made Brad drive around and we went to Pinnock and DK and I literally was like, okay, let's walk in. And I walked in and it took about this long. Okay, I won't be buying flowers here. Um, but I, they do have, you know, some very regular stuff that you can get. So I just have chicken wire in here and I really try not to work with, um, Oasis very much anymore. Sometimes it is impossible not to work with it, but I'm, it's just so bad for the environment. Okay, so what I'm doing, these are all, you know, four different wallpaper setups. And so I thought it would be fun to do arrangements of what I would put in a room that had this wallpaper in it. So the first one is Ariella Peach, and that is all peonies that I photographed from a florist that is very famous, Ariella Shazar. She grows peonies and she sent those to me, hence why it's called Ariella. So I'm going to start with these gorgeous yellow peonies. I, well, you should come over. They're, to Brad's chagrin, they're at my house all the time. And I, I photograph them in all the stages. I very much enjoy watching them go through, you know, life stages. Um, I think of the flowers as a woman and as I age, so do the flowers and they wrinkle and, but they still are lovely. And the most important part is they don't talk back and they um, don't have a mom that tells me what color the peonies need to be from the Martha Stewart Weddings magazine. And if they're not, they're not gonna pay me. So I don't miss that part of doing flowers for people. The other thing, flowers, how, ma how many people know how much one of these peonies would cost if you bought it at a store? How much? It would cost, probably one of these would cost $18 per stem. Um, retail. So they're very expensive and I only like expensive flowers. Um, so, but what people just don't, you know, everyone wants peonies for their wedding, but they have no idea how much they cost. Um, and that was the problem when I was a florist, I would I want everyone's wedding to be exactly what they want it to be. Um, so I would spend some of my own money. And so hence why I never really made any money as a florist. Um, but, you know, if you get like a cute young bride and she's so excited, all you want to do is make her happy. But now I don't do that. Now I just make myself happy. Do 
Y'all are welcome to ask any questions. I usually also like try to do, especially for the, the bigger flowers, I try to do odd numbers. Um, so I'm gonna count like seven. Okay, yay. I have a microphone. If you would like to ask a question, I will bring it to you. What are you using to put in the center the, the flowers down in? You said it's um, a plastic container, and then there's chicken wire. So it's I'll show you. And it, it starts out in like a huge roll. I mean, I've had this for years, so it lasts a very long time. Um, sometimes I use, I also brought these little flower frogs. They're like pins. Um, and sometimes I use those, but, and you can get these on Amazon. I tried to buy them at Penick yesterday and they didn't even know what I was talking about. So anyway. But you can get them, and you can also find them at antique stores. They have a lot of, you know, older ones there. So this, these roses aren't open yet, so I just massage them, you know, with my hands. And you, a lot of people are very scared of the flowers, and I mean, my whole thing is, don't, don't be afraid of the flowers. They're happy to be in your hands. Um, well, they were supposed to, I'll just say, tell you this, they were supposed to arrive yesterday morning at 7 a.m., and instead they arrived at 8 o'clock last night. Um, so I was, I didn't even tell Denise because I didn't want her to worry. Um, so I always just, you know, get them directly out of the box and cut the stems at an angle and put them right into water. I don't use any of the flower food or... I, I never have done that, but even when I was a florist, like fully doing flowers, you know, all day, every day, but a lot of people do. I just, I don't want to add another chemical to the flowers, so I just, and I also like the way they look as they, like I said, as they age, um, and I know not everyone wants, you know, aging flowers, so I, I do keep that in mind, but I don't, I don't um, do like deliveries or anything like that anymore, um, and a lot of times I'll get the flowers in and let them sit for two or three days before I even start working with them, because I want, I need to like get to know them before I work with them, um, which I know sounds strange, but um, I feel like you know, I'll sit and like have conversation, well, a one-way conversation with the flowers. Um, and I'll, you know, be like, oh God, I'm so sorry. I didn't use you. You just don't work in this. Um, I don't want, you know, they were alive at some point. Did you just make a noise? Ashley. Yeah. Do okay. you have a vision for what you want it to look like before you start? Or do you kind of get started and then it gets shaped in your mind as you're going? I know ultimately like the shape that I want it to be in at the end. When I do my photograph, I'll show y'all. I'm going to do one arrangement the way that I photograph because it doesn't have to be all the way around because you don't see the backside. So I have done flowers recently for a few people um, and it's been challenging to remind myself how to do flowers all the way around um, because I only shoot, basically they're like three-sided. And 
but yes, I generally in my mind know what I'm doing, but at the same time, I can, I know I can tear it apart if I don't like it and start over. Um, and I usually, what I do is um, I'll put it together and then I'll put it against the backdrop and I'll photograph it. And I really can't see it until I see it in the camera. So that's how I, that's when I know. Which, and I, I've never taken a photography class. Um, and most, like Dutch Love was um, photographed with my iPhone 4. So that goes to show you that an iPhone does take some good pictures. Um, I've had a lot of my friends who are professional photographers and went to school for, for photo uh, photography and they, in the beginning, were very upset that I was doing what I'm doing and making money doing what I'm doing while they were still photographing weddings and uh, doing not doing what they wanted to do. Um, and I understand that. I mean, I, I am a photographer, but I, I think of myself more of an artist because photography is a very technical field and there's nothing technical to me about what I do. What I do is I, I create something that I feel is visually pleasing and I, I don't even know like all the different things on the camera. I just know like to play with it until I get what I want. So I don't know like what shutter speed I use or any of that. I just, and that's, I mean, I always encourage people. I think cameras are very intimidating to most people. And I just encourage people just, you know, play with it. You can, once you have the, and when I edit, even then I used to be afraid to edit because I thought I'd lose that initial image forever. And of course you don't, it's saved on your computer. So I had to figure that out though. I was always nervous. Now I'm not so much anymore. The photography I started doing in my, like from my bed in 2012. The question was, uh, how long have you been doing photography? How long have I been doing photography? Yeah. Um, yes, so I started in 2012, but really got into it 2013, the photography side of it. When I first thought about doing this, I actually hired a floor, I mean, a photographer to photograph my work and I arranged it because I thought, well, that'll be, that's better because she's a professional photographer, but it wasn't. It was, um, it, it didn't come out the way that, you know, you can visualize or I can visualize things in my head and, and what she was doing was not what I ultimately wanted. So I did it myself. And then flowers, I started doing flowers really the first time I knew that I wanted to do flowers, I was a, a debutante in Corpus Christi, Texas. And when, and I like helped the florist with all the decor. It was a, a mid summer night dream was the theme. And um, I knew that I wanted the space like to feel like a forest and overgrown and, and we, we achieved that. And so when that happened, that's, and then I went on to college and, or I guess I was in college. I finished college and I went straight to Dallas and got a job doing flowers. Um, which you don't really have to go to college to be a florist. Um, but it is, I feel like my art history degree has very much influenced the way I see things. Um, you're, you're using a lot of flowers that are unfamiliar to us here in Florida. Yep, I will tell you so, what yeah. they are. So um, this is flannel flower, and it's when I'm done, y'all can come up and touch them and whatnot. And I, the first time I ever worked with, with this was in Australia, and I just love it. It's very soft. And then this flower right here is butterfly ranunculus. And that is grown in Japan. 
Um, so there's a great example. Australian, Japanese, flown to New York, then flown to me, is not, not an inexpensive go the prices. Um, the question was to go over the prices of flowers. Okay, so, well, I would say that once I'm finished with this arrangement in like a real, this is why I don't do flowers. Um, in a real world, this arrangement would cost $500. And that is on the inexpensive side um, because of the peonies and these, that are like the butterfly ranunculus. I think I got, I think you get 25 stems per bunch and those 25 stems, see I shouldn't be saying any of this because now he knows. Um, but I get, I think for 25 stems, it's a hundred dollars. Um, so. Uh, and two related questions. One's about shipping. I'm just saying them into the mic so everyone can hear. Um, one was about shipping, and someone else wanted to know about who your suppliers are for flowers. So lately, I've been having things shipped to the airport because FedEx, with the pandemic and and then weather, FedEx has lost a lot of my flowers. And luckily for me, normally it's okay. I mean, because I don't need them for an event. I just need them. But sometimes, I mean. I'm working on two new puzzles for Gallison and, and they, I'm on a deadline, so I need the flowers immediately. Um, so now I just have them shipped to the airport uh, via Delta. And so that way the shipping is like $5, but shipping normally via FedEx is over $100. Um, and then my suppliers are in New York and LA. And I used to work with people in Atlanta but my guy that I worked with left, so now I don't work with them anymore. Um, so, and I'm happy to share all of my contacts. Um, you just need a tax ID, and they're happy to they're happy to take your money. Okay, I'm gonna add. Sir, I feel like y'all are just listening to me breathe up here. Like, um, viburnum. So, can y'all see it? Uh, what is that? Was the question for anyone who didn't hear it? Viburnum. And that I had to get from LA because the shipment that went into New York was bad. So it's nice to not have all of your eggs in one basket. Like yesterday, I pretty much did. But it's always when you need it, right? That you can't get it. Ashley. What is your, um, what is the flower that just inspires you? Like that, you know, you um, always wanna do something around that flower. I would say either peonies or poppies. I love, poppies are, I love poppies. I mean, I'll, I reserve them in New York so I can get, I'm, I'm very selfish so I can have them all. So no one else can have them. Um, okay, I have to look and stand back and see what I think. Um, okay, now I'm going to do this one. But poppies are so expressive. They, um, they're so, they're out of season right now, or they're going out of season, so they're not great. So I didn't get them right now, but, um. They just, again, they have that wrinkled um, look that I love. And 
I probably didn't feel the same way about poppies when I was younger because I didn't have wrinkles, but now I do. Um, so I'm doing this, this is a newer pattern. Uh, it's called Welcome Neutral, and I'm gonna do all brights with this because it's hard, it was very hard for me to make that wallpaper because I am not a neutral person at all. My house is, there's nothing in my house that's neutral. We have a bright green kitchen and then a bright pink bathroom, a pink dining room, everything's two-faced, colorful. See, if we could only grow these here, I might try to grow something. These are tree peonies. Mm -hmm. They do, and they are much less common than like a regular peony. Um, and these are like coral charms. I think you can buy these right now at Publix. So if y'all want any, you should go. And they're probably way more affordable um, than what you would get from a local florist. If you can, yeah, show those back on camera, that'd be great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh. Um, I know they grow in California. Where do tree peonies grow naturally? That's a question. Um, because, well, these came from New York, but I don't know where these are from in New York. These were grown in California. They were local to LA. These right here, which I think are so beautiful. These are peonies. Mm -hmm. And I, I poured um, really like boiling hot water into them last night so they would open because they were, they looked like little like mouths. They were cute, but they weren't what I wanted. Ashley, peonies uh, thrive in areas with cold winters and hot summers and do well in the Northeast and Midwest and are hardy from zone four to eight. Oh, huh. yeah. I would love to live somewhere that we could grow peonies, but we moved to Jacksonville four years ago and I um, never in my lifetime ever thought I would live in Florida. I mean, I did not, all I knew about Florida was the Florida man and I hate to say that, but it's, it is true. Just like people in Texas, people think of Texas as people riding horses and cowboy hats and rodeos all day every day and that's not the scenario um so when we came we were lucky to have a great realtor and she understood what i was looking for and we ended up in avondale and we love it it's awesome so four years later and i was actually thinking last night i'm like i don't even want to move anywhere else Ashley. And I normally want to move anytime I go anywhere. I'm like, this is a really cute town. Let's move here. Ashley, I have a quick question for you. Yes. Um, my sister, I was sharing with some friends, sent me pictures of these peonies. She's in North Carolina. Is she growing them? And she has about 10 peonies plants that with about 65 blossoms. Oh, my gosh. On them. So here being in Florida, I'm having peonies envy. Um, I know. And I, and I cannot grow them. You know, we just can't grow them here. What would you say to uh, Floridians here in Northeast Florida that we could use either in our yards or that we could pick up from the floor, you know, a floral wholesaler uh, in place of that? Because I think we're all just drooling over these. <laughs> well, you can get my information and I can just order them for you and have them shipped direct to your house. And for, you know, the same price that I pay for them. Um, I have a 1000% brown thumb. I do not grow anything. 
So I can, the only thing that I see here that seems to thrive are, um, what are the zinnias? Zinnias are everywhere. And, but they, you know, these I feel like are so sophisticated and zinnias are much more casual flower. You can get, I mean, I think if you went to one of the wholesalers and said, I would like some tree peonies, they should be able to get them for you. Um, but you just have to be very specific with them. But again, they only, May is really the season for the tree peony. Do you ever have to worry when you're importing flowers from other countries that they'll bring in any kind of foreign bugs or anything like that? Or do you, does customs give you any issues or? No, I am um, during right when the, when COVID happened, you know, so many businesses were having such a hard time. Um, and I wanted to support the floral industry. So I just ordered direct from Holland and they shipped direct to my house. Some, some of the most beautiful peonies I've ever seen in my whole life. And I just, you know, sold those, but I, you know, honestly, I feel like they take care of that. Um, and if there was something, customs probably wouldn't let them come into the country. Um, but even if they did have bugs, I'd still do what I do because I love them. <laughs> Ashley, mm -hmm. while you're arranging, yes, hi. Um, you know these are beautiful exotic flowers, and they're expensive, and they're hard for us to get. Right. And so, since we don't, not everybody can walk into a wholesale house and get so em. forth. But we can go to Publix and Winn Dixie and things like that. Yep. Tell us what to look for in flowers that you would buy there. Do, you know, do we need to look at the stems and? and the flowers themselves, and, and just give us some hints for the extreme I do, novice. I do buy flowers from, I actually went to Fresh Market yesterday because I didn't know if my flowers were gonna make it. Um, and I buy a lot of flowers from Fresh Market. Um, what I look for, they always, they tend to have really pretty tulips, and I love tulips. Um, and I look for, you know, you can tell if a tulip is good or not, the petals start to wilt, and you can see that I mean, they're kind of a little bit wrinkled. Um, and then the stems and the leaves, if they're not good, they will be, they almost get like a, a white mold on them. So don't ever buy that. Um, and then what else? I mean, they actually, yesterday at Fresh Market, they had great, um, lilies and everything was very, very fresh. Um, but I would just say like, as long as they aren't, well, you can tell if they're, if they look like they're tired, don't buy those. But if they have any stems that are a little bit wilty or a little bit brown, do not, don't get those. I also, I mean, I, I like carnations. Um, not in the traditional sense where you put one in a glass vase and like they would have a like pizza hut. Um, but they have so many beautiful carnations now and they sell them at Publix and um, at all of the grocery stores and they last forever. And I feel like you can do like a, you can get three different colors of carnations and do like a big mound of of that and you make a huge impact and for very little amount of money. And same with the tulips that they sell at Fresh Market, you can buy, you know, well, I would buy probably all of them, but you can buy, um, I mean, you can buy two bunches at Fresh Market and still have a great little like bedside table arrangement and just cut greens from your yard and and that's it. Like I have these little, these cute little vases 
And I got these at Daughters Flowers, which is right, right here on Lomax. Um, they're a cute little floral shop where you can order daily deliveries. And they're two young girls and um, they have cute little containers. And that's another idea for everybody. They sell by the stem and they have interesting flowers. And so you can just go in there and grab like one or two special flowers and then get the rest of it at the grocery store. And that makes a huge statement. Oh, well, there she goes. That wouldn't happen if it was on your wall. <laughs> um, at least that one's already done. Ashley, tell us um, what the flowers are besides the tree peonies in this bouquet. These are spray roses, and I just love that beautiful lavender color. And then these pretty things are ranunculus. And those all came from New York. This, everything so far in this arrangement came from New York. And I, I have specific flowers that I like to work with all the time. I mean, I, I love to work with peonies. I love ranunculus. Um, I, don't, I don't work with roses as much as you would think. Um, but roses are another great thing to get at the grocery store. I mean, those, the roses that are at the grocery store here will also last a long time. And they're not expensive. The chicken wire you're using, is it coated? Mm -hmm. But and you don't have to use coated. You can use just, you can go to Home Depot and get it. I know I have that, but you know, it hurts your hands. So I was thinking that the yeah. coated might be easier to deal with. It is easier. And you can you can get the chicken wire at, um, at Pinnock. Okay, and I, you could probably also get it on Amazon. Um, but if you want to shop local, go to Pinnock. And it will literally last you years. Ashley, I know uh, some designers have uh, numbers in mind when they're creating arrangements, you know, odd numbers uh -huh. and so forth. Do you use I any do. of those rules? I, I do. I mean, with the when I start with the largest flower, I definitely do. I start always with an odd number. But then, like I said, when I put it in front of the backdrop and start to photograph it, if I need to add one, I just kind of forget that. But I do like to use an odd number. These are, look at those tulips, aren't they gorgeous? They're so crazy. How do you know what length to cut the stem? Who just asked me that? Right here. Oh, hi. Um, well, because I've been doing it for so long, I just think I know, but I, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'll cut it and it's still too long and then I just, I'll put it in and I'll take it out and I'll put it in and I'll take it out um, until, it get, until I get to exactly where I want. But like here, I'm gonna put this like right in here and I want it to stand up a little taller so I'm not gonna cut very much. And then, There's a lot of chicken wire in there. It's hard to navigate. So, like that. And the thing with tulips too, I mean all the flowers have a mind of their own. Um, and they'll, tulips, you know, are, they'll start like this and then they'll go like this and then they'll do this, they'll do this up and down thing, which I love. Some people don't love that um but i think it's great because it shows their different um personalities i remember one time i was working for a florist in houston and i delivered these gorgeous french tulips 
to um, a client that we had had forever, and they were, you know, hanging down, and she was like, I can't believe that you're delivering me dead flowers. Like, oh my gosh, they're, they, they're not. Those are, we just got those today. But, you know, if you're not used to having flowers, I can understand where someone would think that. I usually, well, I, I just kind of shove it in there, like. The question was about the chicken wire. Is it in a ball, or what's the shape of it in the in the vase? I also have. How many clippers do you think we have? Thirty, and I usually, whenever I go to New York, I buy a new pair. Um, not because I need it, but because they don't sell them here. Um, so I'm just cutting this to show you an example of what I do. So depending on the size of the container, I then like get it and go like that, and then I just shove it in. And then I kind of, you know, until it's in there good. And I, I prefer to work with chicken wire more than I would work with like a frog because frogs fill up very quickly and then you can't add any more flowers. It's a good opportunity for me to remind you that raffle tickets um, are for sale. And all of these arrangements will be raffled. <laughs> so don't forget. I will remind you before we uh, actually do the raffle, but uh, you can get your raffle tickets. So if you're salivating as I am, please. I know I'm, I'm kind of sad I have to give them away. Um, I don't even get to take their pictures. They're like, these are my supermodels. Although I do, I, I do sometimes photograph um, people. One of the mothers of one of my favorite people to photograph is here today. If you bought your raffle tickets online, uh, when you checked in, uh, your, the person who checked you in should have told you, you know, here are the raffle tickets, and so they are in the bowl. Um, but all of those tickets that were bought online are in the bowl, so you're covered. Ashley? Mm -hmm. When, um, it's me again, oh, hi. <laughs> when uh, you're working with these flowers, and I noticed you picked up the tulips and they were all flopped over, which a lot of us would say, oh my goodness, that's all flopped over. I don't want to use that. Um, and we might try to wire it. Do you ever try, do you ever wire anything? I do sometimes. Um, but again, I, I am more about the natural beauty and how they move but yes i mean when i was doing arrangements for weddings or to deliver and i knew people would not be happy with that i would definitely do some wiring um and i still i mean i still have all those tools and everything i just don't like to do it as much anymore Normally, I would start with the greens, but I just couldn't help myself with these flowers. Hi, Ashley. I just have a quick question over here. Oh, hi. Um, can you speak a little bit about your photography and how the steps that you take and the lighting and how many pictures do you take before you think you've got it? Yes. I'm actually going to, this little setup right here, I'm going to do some pictures, but um, I sometimes take a hundred pictures sometimes i take two um, it just really depends on how i see it um, when when i i only use natural light 
I don't use any lighting, uh, any like, you know, overhead lighting. It's all natural. So it's very dependent on what's happening outdoors. Um, and I usually photograph in our dining room with, you know, a setup like this. So I don't, you know, I, there's nothing fancy about it. You know, it's anyone can do it. And then on my, and I use my phone a lot. I mean, more than I use my camera because I still love the outcome. And I use an app called Afterlife or Afterlight. I always say that Afterlife, it's not. Um, and I've used that from the beginning. And I tried a bunch of different ones, the Visco or I don't, I might be the only person in, on the planet that doesn't enjoy that one. But, um, and I just, I just edit it on there and then I pull it into my computer and that's when I enlarge them and, and do any like tweaks I need to in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, it's, it is like I was saying, I'm, I'm definitely an artist before I'm a photographer. So there's not a lot of secrets to my, to what I do. And I'm happy to, that's what I would do. I mean, when I was going to Australia, that's what I was teaching everyone, how to photograph flowers with your iPhone or your smartphone. And then eventually I was teaching advanced classes and Olympus was um, sponsoring it. So they would bring enough cameras for everyone in the class, which was fun. But you don't need a, you do not need a camera. I mean, now if I was doing a billboard, I would use my camera. But if I, but I mean, even still, like that's with my, my the very first iPhone I had, and that Afterlight app. Mm. Mm -hmm. It is, and it's um, now I've been doing it for so long that it's not as addictive as it once was. But when, when I teach the classes in Australia and, and go over all of that, it's, you, no one looks at you at all anymore. Like they're just doing this, like the rest of the class. Um, because there's so many, and I'll, you'll see in just a minute how I do it. But um, there's all different layers that you can put on top of it. And that's sort of the secret I think is because I, I don't just take it and then I'm done. I mean, I think they come out so well because I add all those layers. These are sweet peas in case, and they smell so good. I do. I actually went to Fresh Market yesterday to get some and they didn't have any that I wanted. So, but I love to do that. Um, and I have, I just use the little picks and hang them down and I love to do that. I use, I mean, I was just going to get some pretty grapes if they had them and do that, but they didn't even have any pretty grapes. I must have gone at like the non-delivery time or something, but Yes, and then like artichokes I'll use, or um, I like to use pomegranates a lot, but those aren't available right now. So you can see like when you can't see me anymore, when I'm like, I'm just making sure that I am liking it from all angles. And a lot of times because the sweet peas are so sweet, I bundle them and then I'll put them in together. So, and whoever gets these pretties, make sure y'all keep some, keep them full of water. There's no, again, I'm not using any oasis in any of these arrangements. So they should be, if y'all, if y'all keep them, Water, they should be happy for a while. So this is like a a thousand dollar arrangement. 
who's going to be the lucky winner of this one? Once again, I'll remind you that raffle tickets are for sale. <laughs> so would anyone in this room pay $1,000 for a flower arrangement? Just for like your house? <laughs> Hence why I'm not a florist anymore. <laughs> I do have some people that I'll do flowers for every once in a while, but that's because, and when I say people, it's basically one person, and it's because she will pay that, but. So the beauty of these is that you're recording them forever, and then they get turned into yes. things that last forever, so. That's uh, right, there's, which yeah. I love. Yes, thank you, honey. All right, this is gonna be the, the big daddy. Um, see, those weren't even big. Those were the babies. Um, okay, let me do this. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna do like cinnamony colors for Dutch Love. And I'm gonna try to incorporate this. What what is this? Okay, asparagus retro practice. Oh my gosh. Wow. Oh my gosh, I'm so honored. I'm using. You do? Okay. Where do you live? Okay. Well, you're kind of close to me. So, in here, I've got the chicken wire again, but I might not have enough to hold that. So there is the chicken wire. So I'm gonna do my balling up and I'll cut some more. I also make a huge, huge, huge mess every time I do flowers. Um, and right now you should be happy that we're not doing this at my house because it's got lots of empty boxes and stems and leaves all over the place. Um, because this woman that I had heard of she owns a business called The School, and it's all creative courses that she teaches, or she hires different artists to teach. And I was actually pretty nervous about it because of my back and making that long journey. Um, but she was sent, kept sending pictures of everything, and I couldn't not go. Um, and people in Australia, because they're so removed from everything they're they're like sponges they just are so excited to learn something new um and they're and and that's why she is who reached out to me first and she just was very drawn to the the dark all my dark stuff and also the story my story because it was you know it's such a it could have gone a completely different way you know, I mean, well, first of all, I shouldn't have survived because of my aorta and my duodenum were both torn, um, but I did. And then, you know, I could have been, you know, not able to walk ever again. And then I also could have become 
addicted to my pain pills and never done anything ever again. And instead I did the opposite. So I think that the story, she just was very encouraged by that and wanted people to hear it and to share it. Um, so she kept just having me back, which was great because I that now that flight I haven't been in several years but now that flight's one of my favorite times because no one can reach me and I can watch whatever I want on TV and um, yeah but it's she was the woman Megan Morton is her name and she was a stylist for Vogue magazine um, in Sydney and so I had Fashion is probably, fashion and art are my, the two things that I refer to most um, for inspiration. And so I knew who she was. Um, but she sent an email and, and it was definitely, she was definitely speaking Australian, which, you know, is English. But it's a very different um, cadence in different words. And so I didn't, she was basically... She, she asked me to come over there, but I didn't know what she was asking me by her email. Um, and I was like, is this really Megan Morton or is this someone pretending? Um, this is Fritillaria and I love it. I just wanted to ask people if you haven't done so already to silence your cell phones. Um, and then Christina Kittle, our administrative associate, had a question as well. Yeah, um, I just got a question about uh, since uh, do you have like favorite plants that you use based on your mood? Like if you're in more of like a darker mood, do you have like a go to favorite? Well, it's very seasonal. You know, I mean, flowers, unfortunately, don't always the flower that I want at that moment isn't always available. Um, but you know, I mean, dahlias are about to be in season, and I cannot wait. But dahlias are very hard to ship here because, see, this would be a great example of when to use a wire right there. But I don't think I have any. But you know what? I'm going to use, I have tape. So this is just green floral tape. So I'm going to use that. Um, but I, I kind of rely on my suppliers to, I'll send them texts and say, send me what's pretty, like pictures of what's pretty, and then I'll decide. Um, and then that's when I like go with my color scheme and I figure it out that way. But that's unusual for a florist because usually you have to follow, you know, very strict rules because you have a bride or you have a, pl a, a planner of an event that wants very specific colors. Um, but I don't do that now. So, but I do feel for the people that do because, um, you know, once Martha Stewart and Pinterest entered the, the world and, and most people don't think about Photoshop or, you know, what you can do on the computer to the flowers. You know, they are enhancing the colors online or they're even enlarging the blooms. I mean, doing all sorts of things. And, and it's really unfair to the florist because you can't, you can't compete with Pinterest. Um, and you have to. Um, so that's, I always made that very clear to my brides. They'd bring in a Martha Stewart Weddings magazine and I would say, okay, well, if this is so beautiful and I totally agree with you, but that does not exist in nature. So it's not going to happen. Um, unless you want me to spray paint it and I'm always happy to do that. But so see, I'm massaging it and opening it and smelling it. Um, you know, I don't even know what it's called. 
I just said, I need cinnamon colored flowers. And he, he sent me all the images and I selected from that. There's so many names of roses. I can't usually keep up. But roses can grow here. I mean, I, I know a lot of people. Do y'all grow roses? Yeah. And, oh my gosh, what is the lily that um, Anne has? I just forgot what it's called. The, okay, it'll come to me. This amazing lily that our next door neighbor grows. And if you buy it at the wholesaler, like per stem, it's like $8. Um, Gloriosa. And she planted one in our otherwise empty patch of dirt. And so we have this one Gloriosa lily growing out of it. And it's so pretty. But it's because I just kept going on and on. I was like, I can't believe you grew that. And I have to pay so much money for that. mentioned um, a couple of things that I thought were really interesting that uh, you're really drawn to the personality of the flowers and which often means that they're not perfect mm -hmm. are you know our ideals of perfect mm -hmm. and then um, the opposite of that working with people who you know want this unattainable thing that they see in a magazine mm -hmm. um, to be recreated and I think there's a real um, you know crazy juxtaposition there you know like um, we're always trying to perfect what is, in essence, already per perfection, right? Yes. <laughs> um, yes. And I, I mean, yes, I love a, I love a sad flower as much as I love a happy flower. Um, but again, I don't know that I thought that before my car accident, um, because I was sort of trained to think otherwise, and then I had all this time to to stop and really just spend time with the flowers and watch them go from, you know, the minute they walk in the door until the minute I'm ready to release them, which sometimes is many weeks. I'll let them, I mean, I love to photograph very, very, very dead flowers, but that's for a very special person that wants that. Um, but I, I mean, I do love the in-between stages too. Uh, some people may be familiar with Piet Udolf, um, who is a world-renowned landscape architect and um, designer. And uh, there's a documentary about his work called, I believe, The Five Seasons of Piet Udolf. And uh, he designs spaces, you know, large, you know, parks. He's done uh, things in Chicago and New York and Atlanta and so forth. But he designs them to be enjoyed in all seasons. The fifth season is the drying. He likes to take the dried things and do things with them as well. But so the, the sort of corpses of um, the leftover uh, plants are just as beautiful as when they're in full bloom is, is his um, philosophy. I, I agree. This is a sweet pea. I love sweet peas. Like if you got this, which I kind of, Brad chose the container, which I kind of love. I mean, here's this like beautiful feminine sweet flower in a spaghetti sauce jar. Um, but, and they smell just like heaven. Um, but that like grouping of sweet peas, that's $400. So, but you know, just have a couple in your arrangement and they're pretty too. Ashley, do you ever work with dried flowers over here? Okay, Stephanie. wait, who's back? Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, Stephanie, hi. Okay, what'd you ask? Do you ever work with dried flowers? Um, no, I work with I ha well, I can't say I work with. I have started to buy silk flowers or like at, um, because honestly, the silk flowers are prettier than any of the flowers I can 
fresh flowers so I can get in Jacksonville, um, which is, it makes me sad, but because um, they're fun, you know, they're very frivolous and just, they're not serious. Um, but dried flowers, I don't work with dried flowers and I don't, I never have worked with dried flowers. I mean, if an arrangement, if my flowers dry, then I guess I do do that, but I don't take them apart. I just photograph all the stages that they were in. Um, I, I think that, I mean, that dried flowers make me nervous because they're so brittle and they can break so easily. And I feel like I would want to mess with them too much, but so no. This one's gonna weigh like 800 pounds, just FYI. And I actually, I got this container at Finnick. So, yay, Finnick. It really does weigh a lot. This is what I need you for, honey. Come lift for me. Okay. Okay. And I have all different kinds of like clippers up here. See like what a disaster it is up here. Um, I, I use these to cut the wire. And then I use these to cut the flowers. And sometimes I use these. I mean, you can never have too many clippers. I would tell you not to use regular scissors. Um, this one is actually called Corona. How about that? But they're nice and light and easy to work with. I let them sit there until they die and then I throw them away. <laughs> Um, but I photograph them in those stages. Um, I mean, I would love to tell you that I donate them, but I, I don't. Um, because I feel like by the time I'm ready to be rid of them, nobody, nobody would want them. Um, there, when I was doing weddings, we would, we would donate them sometimes. Sometimes guests would take them home. Sometimes guests would take home like the silver and we would have to go back and get them, like collect them from all of them. Hey, I just had another question. Um, your photos look a lot like um, certain art that I'm into. Are you inspired by any painters or artists? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm very inspired by all of the Dutch masters. Um, very inspired. I mean, all, anything like all that drama definitely, definitely um, inspires me. Um, I, I mean, my favorite artist of all time is Frida Kahlo. Um, and I just love her and love what she created and loved her. I wish that she were, I wish I could have met her. Her story lines up with your story kind of too. Mm -hmm. Yes. We, luckily I didn't have to have nearly, I mean, any surgeries in comparison to Frida. She had to have so many and, you know, was bedridden for most, most of her life but, and couldn't have kids, and it, it, she was much more tragic than, than me. So I count my blessings for that. Here's a carnation, died. Um, and I, I will say, I don't, I, I don't use carnations as a feature flower. They're always like tucked in there. Uh, like, well, actually Dutch love 
has carnations in it, but you can't even really see them. I don't think people buy Dutch love because of the carnations. Um, but there's just so many, I mean, they, I, from when I started doing flowers until today, there's so many more options. Um, and I know a lot of people who, if you are trying to, you know, work within a budget, which most people are, um, a lot of people use mostly greens or will cut from their yards or will just do carnations and get roses. And, you know, you can, again, do a really beautiful, I'm just messing up your whole table, Denise, I'm sorry. But it's because this thing weighs 8,000 pounds. Um, you can, flowers to me, if somebody brings you flowers, you're lucky that somebody thought to bring you flowers, regardless of what they are. Um, again, no one will bring me flowers ever. But last night, one of the tree peonies had the head fell off and I asked Brad to put it in water and he put it in a bowl next to our, my bed on my side. And I walked in and I was like, I think that's the nicest gesture you've ever done. So good job, honey. Carnation you're working with, you said it's dyed. Mm -hmm. So if I went and bought white carnations and put it in some strong coffee, do you think I could replicate that to some degree? Maybe, yeah. Or you can go get that writ dye yeah. Yeah. and just stick them in there, okay. and they should soak it up. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with roses. Um, the sweet, I mean, they're dying so many things, like so many different flowers now. They dye tulips. They're like beautiful shades of blue or they're crazy shades of, you know, green, just things that don't grow in nature. Um, so, yeah, I think you, you can probably pick any color you want and just, I haven't ever dyed them myself, but I know, I mean, that's what they do sure. I don't know how they get those rainbow flowers to happen. I've never used those. I've never used those. I've never used um, blue roses. Um, but the blue roses, I imagine, are just the same. You just stick them in that dye. I really want this to stand up and it's having an issue. That looks like it should be in a still life by a Dutch master. Except for the container. But yes, thank you. That is a large compliment. Okay. I was coming over here. Okay, so those are dyed. Not that one. Yeah, because you can't get that color really in nature. But see, like, here's a good example of, well, see, if these were at Fresh Market, you would think these were, were dead, but they're not. But this one is one that I won't use because it's kind of curled up at the, like the petals are a little, so I'm gonna toss that one. Um, but I haven't seen any dyed tulips or flowers at any of the grocery stores, so that shouldn't be an issue. I mean, how many people in this room take flowers, buy flowers weekly? Oh, that's awesome. And do you buy them at Publix or? Yeah. Oh yeah, Trader Joe's has great flowers. Yeah, yeah, Trader Joe's is just so far away. Um, and 
so in Austin, what was the, what's the um, HEB Central Market? Oh, it's the best grocery store in the whole wide world. And they, they have better flowers than the wholesalers. I mean, so good. So I would go there all the time and get my flowers. And those, you know, anyone can buy them. But a lot of the wholesalers now, you don't have to have tax IDs to go in um, because they're also desperate for business. Um, this is one of my favorite tulips. It's an apricot tulip. And I do this a lot with my tulips. I'll take off all the leaves and then I'll hold it back, the petals back. Can y'all see this? Is it in there? Um, this one might not work as well, but it, and then they open up so it's a bigger head. I keep seeing myself right there. It's very alarming. Um, so, yeah, these might not work as well, but some of them will just like open like that and I'll put them in an arrangement and then they become the, really the focus. I've been there. I've been there, but I I haven't ever Jackson bought Hill anything. Walmart? I've never found anything there that I liked. Yeah, I, it just I it makes me very sad, and maybe because Jacksonville is seeing so much growth and you know movement, and that'll change. We'll get a a good wholesaler. But it's a, I mean, that is not for the weary. You know, it's a, it's like a 24 hour job. Cause it's, you know, you think about like flowers, like the New York market opens at like 4.30. And then when I was in Sydney, you have to get to the market by 3.30 to make sure that, and then people are like running through the doors to get in. Um, to make sure you get the good, I mean, but there's so much good stuff, it's kind of silly, but still, I don't want anybody stealing my flowers. Okay. It's like a trough full of Hours. I mean, I'm very jealous that y'all get to take these home. Okay, I, I will. You should not say things that you do not mean. Uh, now that I have this portable stand situation and I I usually just put that velvet thing on our fireplace and then our cat tries to knock it down and and I actually have a studio but I rarely go to it. I just like to be at home, use our house as the studio. I have a question. Do yep. you ever use magnolias? Yes, I love magnolias. Um, I would have used some Today, I just, um, so I love like magnolias when they go like that camel color when they're dead. I think that it's so beautiful. Um, but I, right now I don't have any close to my house and I, sometimes I feel guilty for taking flowers. And this week was one of those weeks. 
Um, most of the time I don't feel guilty for taking them. I mean, now if someone has like a pristine garden, I'm not just gonna steal flowers from you. I'll knock on your door and say, can I cut from something? But if it's growing on a tree and there's 500 camellias blooming, then I'll just cut a couple and, and run away. Um, but all the magnolias that I keep seeing are all like, they're all in areas that I feel like they're there for everyone to enjoy and I feel bad about taking them today. That might change tomorrow. Um, well, if I can get them long enough, I'll just, I mean, all you need is three stems, really. And you just, I would, I have a vase that's about like from the table, it's probably about this tall. And then I'll just cut three big stems and have those bloom, three big blooms. And they're, I feel like they're more difficult to um, arrange with other flowers because I mean, they're so beautiful. You don't need any other flowers. And I mean, I would put, if I put one in here, I would like put it down just have one in the whole arrangement. I wouldn't put them everywhere. I feel like it's either like one or everywhere. You know, it's the whole arrangement or one. So that's, do you have them in your yard? And you're, are they growing in your, yeah. So cut them, like cut them and put them in a big vase and just do that is what I would do. Oh, I forgot about these. The dark, those are ranunculus. So they kind of go with that color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, they are. They're, they are, they are dying a lot of ranunculus too, to um, like blues and purples and fun colors, but these are natural. So, out of these three, which one do y'all want me to photograph? The tree peonies? Okay, that one? No, we can have a, we can have a vote. We can have A, B, and C. Who, who wants A? Okay, honey, it's your job to count. A. You got it? Okay, kind of. Okay, B. Oh, okay. And C. Well, maybe we'll do both. And I can always do them and not, you know, I can do them behind. I can do one and show y'all, and then I can do one behind the scenes. Um, what, I mean, is it time for me to do that? Yeah, we started about 10 minutes uh, late, so we're, you know, in that 15 minute mark right now. Okay. Oh, okay. I used to have to tell our now 12 year old, I probably would still have to tell her, don't eat the flowers. And I just had it in my mouth. Um, did you hear the audible gasps from the audience as I you were did. turning it? Yay, that means that it's looking pretty. It's harder to tell close up than it is far away. I'm not even gonna like go into pricing on this one. But you're a lucky person. Okay. The 
does everybody have raffle tickets that wants them? Yes. I'm also giving away, if you look behind you, there's a tray back there. Um, it's that, it looks like it's neon surrounding it. And that's my print called Florida. And, um, and then I'm giving away the print in the middle. That's a new print called Claire. And then I'm also giving away a corpsicle. I'm not giving away the Kohler sink that's back there, but it is there for you for your viewing pleasure. Um, so lots of chances to win some goodies. Mm -hmm. I, I have it the, in- So uh, just repeat the question. So uh, the question was, do you have any of your own wallpaper in your house? I do. It's um, in my entry and in the powder bath. The powder bath is um, pink poppies is the name of the pattern. And it's pink poppies, like floor to, the floor is the pattern, the walls, the ceiling, and then the drapes. So everything is in it. I I still love that room. I'm very ready to change the entry, um, but it's not allowed right now. Um, vinyl. So it's over my normal floor, but I just had a friend print it and um, I love it. Okay. Oh, I can see it. Look, I can see it from there. I didn't even know that. Ashley, how do you know when an uh, arrangement is done? That's a real good question. Um, I don't, I just, I, you, I do it until I just can't do it anymore. Um, usually, oh no, that had just come up. These are bearded iris. They're just not open yet. And there's a chance they'll never open, but I think they're still so cool. And they're only around for a very, very, very short time. And they're hard to come by. I did. Boiling water. Mm -mm. And sometimes, like with peonies, a lot of times I'll get, I'm trying to make it, okay. A lot of times I'll put them in hot water and then if they don't do anything, then I'll put a trash bag over them and like tie it. And then if that doesn't do anything, then I'll put them in my car with the trash bag in the heat and they'll open. They're like, gosh darn it, you're forcing me to open. Yep. Bert tips here from Ashley. <laughs> yeah. Um, it works. Yes. It is. <laughs> I do. I do it on, um, I print it on three different types of paper. So I just print it on, the main one I do is um, non-woven vellum. And that's what these are. So you can come up and feel it. It feels like paper. Um, and it's, I just, it took me a while to find what I liked the most, but that's what I like. Grass cloth is my all time favorite, but it's a lot more expensive. Um, and then we also print on a commercial grade for like commercial projects. And so that's called type two. And all of the, all of the paper I print is printed in Connecticut by a husband and wife team. And they, when I started working with them, they had one employee and they worked out of their garage and now they have 50 employees and they have two giant warehouses and like 10 printers. So they're amazing and they're very um, anal retentive. There's not a better term, so sorry, but they, which they have, I mean, 
which is a very important thing for wallpaper printers to be so everything like matches up and I mean I did this I don't hang wallpaper um, that is definitely it's a skill and it's and there aren't very many wallpaper hangers around anymore so we we need to maybe Woodson will become a wallpaper hanger <laughs> he's like nope not going to happen. Um, we can we can put the kitty latte wallpaper in your room, Woodson. I have wallpaper that has my cat. It's not in my house, but and I don't think it'll ever be in anyone's house. But <laughs> I like it nonetheless. Yeah, I, absolutely. That'll start a whole new trend. Okay, now I'm stuck. Okay, she's almost done. Denise, back to your original question. How do I know when I'm done? I also just like to make sure that there's no holes but a lot of times I can't I won't see that until I'm taking the picture and then I'll just drop something in there um, okay honey it's your Second duty of the day. Can Time you, to bring in the muscle. <laughs> you, yeah, over. Um, yeah, on that table, this needs to be closest to the stage. We're going to start with this one, photographing it. Thank you. Oh, look. See, it's heavy, isn't it? Yep. Okay. So, smartphone. I just use like the camera on the phone to take the picture. I don't go into any app, it's just the regular phone. Um, and a lot of times I'll put it, well, my, I have a new phone, so it has the portrait mode, but now I'll use that, but before I would just use the regular. And I have to be able to pretend that I've done yoga. Contort. It, it just, can you see how, it just makes it closer, basically. So if I do the regular camera, I just get, you know, scoot my body closer. So the portrait mode on an Apple iPhone, and I don't know about other phones if it is similar, um, is basically if you were to take a portrait of somebody, a picture of a, an individual, um, and it like takes the background and kind of blurs it so that the person is super in focus and beautiful and everything behind it is you know, in the background. So you get a much crisper image of the, the thing that's in the foreground. But if you place the image too close to your camera, um, you need to have that six foot to eight foot distance. Um, it definitely kind of messes it up. So using portrait mode, um, you'll get much better pictures almost all the time in that. Uh, so it's, it's a pro tip, like try portrait mode, play around with it. You'll get really great, great results. Make sure you ask the right person <laughs> that question. Again, that's like a photographer question that I don't know the answer to. Um, no, no flash. Mm -mm. It would actually, I mean, what I would normally do is none of these lights would be on, all of the blinds would be up just to get the light in. 
So that is enough light. Can you, can you pull the black a little bit? The black. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You're going to be in the picture. You're going to be part of part of the portrait. Okay. All right. I'm done. Thank you. Um, so I've cropped out everything but the flowers in the dark backdrop. So then after that, I take it into the app that I use, which is called Afterlight. And I think you can buy it. It's like $2.99. Is it free? Oh. Oh. Well, get the free one. Um, so, okay, it's in there now. So what I do, I like, and you can do this on Photoshop or on your phone or, or whatnot. You just play with all the different, like it, right now it says brightness. And I've always, because it's a dark print, I tend to take it, like make it less bright. So make it as, especially if there's no lighting, but there is lighting in here right now. So this is gonna be a interesting thing for me. Um, the next step is what I really want to tell you all about, but I got to do this first. Um, it's when I start putting all the layers. So on Afterlight, there's like a color wheel at the bottom down here, and there's all different. One says original, one says guest. So I always go to the original first, and I there's black and white versions. So I, I'm sorry, this is so tiny, but I, I make it black and white, but I don't keep it black and white. So I take, I bring back color. And I, I think that's one of the reasons why they print so well is because that's the first layer and I'm bringing color back in. And then I go through, there's like, 25 different layers and I can do all 25 or I could do one. It just depends on the arrangement. So, and there are some that I use more than others, but it's, it's very crazy that you can do all of this on your iPhone. So, let me get to the, the finished version so you can see the difference. I Well, no, because of that square, the rectangular box. This would be a print. The, I would just the question do was, what is this arrangement most suited for? And it, I wouldn't probably make it into a wallpaper because of that. Um, rectangular box at the bottom, although you can remove the rectangular box and you can turn the arrangement on its side and you can do so many different things to create different patterns. I do, after, after I do it on my phone, I take it into Photoshop and I enlarge it and then I'll tweak some things, but most of the editing I do on my phone so I wish I, well, I was going to say I wish I could say differently, but I actually don't. I love, I love the way it looks from just editing and on here. And there's so many different amazing apps that you can use now on your phone that you don't really have to. The only thing you need Photoshop for is to enlarge it so that it, you can blow it up. Okay. So, so the original was like a lot brighter and more saturated. I'm coming around and this is the edited version. So it's just, you know, a little 
darker and moodier, and which is what I like. I do that on Photoshop, and I take it up to 300. So, yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? You can see what I mean? You can, like, become addicted and do this all day. Just play on your phone. But, you know, I'm playing on my phone but working. Isn't that pretty? Feel like Vanna White. <laughs> Thank you. Should I see it? Oh, touch it. Thank you. Thank you. So voila. Um, is that it? Okay. Okay. Um, I will photograph that one, but I'm not going to do it while y'all are all sitting down, and then I'll come around and show y'all. But I know Denise is about to do some raffling of. Oh, questions first. Yes. Does anyone have more questions? Are you. Will you take photographs of these and put them on Instagram for us? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I will. Which ones? Um, I was going to do the white peonies. I was going to do these pretty ranunculus these and these. This is a peony. Isn't that pretty? I might still do it. And these, which I love these. These are crazy ranunculus. It's pretty. No, these are from nature. There, it's crazy. Um, just to clarify, so you you approach your vendor, say in New York, mm -hmm. um, because this past weekend they had all the all the vendors out and everything in New York City um, because of the holiday. But oh yeah. So then you have a trip to the airport, mm -hmm. and then you make your airport run. Yes. But yesterday, I went twice, and Brad went once, because they were supposed to arrive two different, well, three different times. So <laughs> normally, it's just once. But it's just to ensure, because FedEx is just, FedEx and UPS, with all, they just haven't been operating as well as normal. So it's, it, yesterday was very unusual that that happened. Well, that is a streamlining it. Especially during this year, you've uh, really managed to get to the target of the issue yes. to bring all these folks closer. Yes. Well, I, again, I I don't want to live without flowers, so I'll figure it out however I can. Yes, and you know, I, I must say, because I have followed your work, I, I see um, other, quote, famous uh, florists, like, say, in Boston. Mm -hmm. And they kind of piggyback on your dark mode. Yes. Do you? Do you? Does that astound you, or do you? Are you I, it does not. Nothing surprises me, really. Um, they. I've had. I, I mean, I've had to sue people for stealing Dutch love and putting it on pillow. Like Home Goods did that. Um, and right now, um, Amazon and. What's the other one? Overstock and what's the other big Wayfair? They all have they have Dutch Love on there, and so and what happens is 
Amazon has so many different, I can't do anything about it, is basically, even though I own the copyright, they just, and I actually ordered it off of Amazon to see what it looked like, and I ordered it like a month ago, and I still haven't received it. So I don't know if it's even, if it really even happens, or if it's just some sort of, I don't know, I, some fraud, you know, but it, it very much, that upsets me. The, the people that are photographing against the dark backgrounds and all of that, you know, I didn't invent that either. It's what the Dutch masters invented. They weren't photographing, they were painting. And so I can't claim that, you know, and, and it, I mean, I, I do have, I bought some of their work too, you know, some of the younger girls that are doing it. And I want to encourage them to do it. I feel, again, I mean, no one owns one way of doing art. So I want, if they want to do it, now if they did the exact same thing and used the exact same flowers, I might talk to them about that. But, um, but otherwise, it's fine. Well, yes. It, well, and they won't reach out to me, like, they reach out to me after I purchase, because I think they're nervous, and then if I buy one, then they're like, oh, my God, I wanted to talk to you, and, and then I'm happy to talk to them. Okay, uh, one last question. Ash Ashley, I was wondering, you, do you work directly, um, like, on a commission basis with certain of your dealers, or is it oh, just, is, are the, they um, just a With the vendors? Mm -hmm. No, well... Oh, with the like, collaborations? Right, or you mentioned that you were doing something for a puzzle company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it depends on, so I have a licensing agent and they find, so like CB2 comes through them, so they get a cut and then I get the rest, which usually they, they pay you a um, upfront fee and then you get a percentage of sales. Um, and I, it depends again on the company. Like for, you would be surprised how little you actually make and how much time you have to put into it for some of them. So now I've started to really choose a little better what I work on. But, cause some of like the furniture, I would get checks, I still do, I get checks for like $11, which doesn't even pay for the flowers, obviously. Um, so, yeah, okay. All right, uh, can we give Ashley a big hand? Thank you. Um, if uh, you haven't already looked up uh, Ashley on uh, Instagram, at Ashley Woodson Bailey, it's actually just her name, uh, <laughs> is where you find her, and awblove.com is her website. Um, Highly recommend it. It is a fantastic site with um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. All right, so um, it's my job to uh, tell you about a couple of things coming up. Um, just next week, a week from tomorrow, we have uh, the District 4 spring meeting. So FFGC, the District 4 meeting is happening right here in this ballroom. Uh, we're going to have an amazing presentation um, as part of that. There'll be a business meeting, but after lunch is a presentation by Cheryl Kummer, and uh, two women who have worked on her property, Lanakila Garden, uh, which is right on the St. John's River on Mandarin Road. Uh, they have developed a permaculture forest, a fresh cut flower, a local fresh cut flower. So um, somebody that we need to hook uh, Ashley up with so she can find out what they're growing. Um, a farm and a, an organic, organic garden as well. Um, and uh, they're gonna talk about how they do that, how they do it sustainably. And uh, the way that Cheryl has um, protected that land through the North Florida Land Trust. So I think that's going to be a really fascinating thing and uh, a great way to mix with some uh, other circle members. Um, also, uh, the 24th, so that's two weeks from Monday, uh, we have a virtual program that we're doing in combination with the Nature Conservancy and the uh, in Groundwork Jacksonville, talking about uh, conservation conservating land, con conserving land, not conservating, conserving land, um, uh, both in Jacksonville and throughout Florida. And uh, that will be a really great program on May 24th. Um, we're gonna pass the raffle. So 
Hopefully you all have sent your raffle tickets and we're, we're going to um, announce those as soon as we end this part of the program. So hold on to those. We're gonna announce those in a minute. Uh, we are going to send all of you a survey in, the, in your email tomorrow. Please take the survey. Please tell us what you thought of this program. Tell us what kinds of programs you wanna see in the future. We use this feedback. It's very important to us. And uh, so we need to hear from all of you. So give us the best um, res response. You don't have to give us a great rating, but give us like, you know, we want 100% of you to respond. So please give us that feedback. We really need it and appreciate it. Once again, I'd like to thank the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for making programs like this possible. And I wanna thank all of you for being here. Thank you for my colleagues, Daniel and Christina, who's you know, doing things all over the campus right now. Um, we're so appreciative of all of you for making this a great program. And that's it. Thank you, everybody.